and I want to lock it kind of here in the middle of his tricep instead of up here where you can open your elbow and yeah. But right here in the middle of his tricep. Number one, monitor the posture. I'm looking for his posture all the time. Rule number two, I have to keep his elbow open. Rule number three, I can't let him touch my hip. And rule number four, no matter what, don't lock it too early. It's kind of like feeding the gremlins after midnight. You know what I mean? Don't do that. They're cute and everything, but don't get them wet and don't feed them after midnight. Maintain the posture. That weight, or monitor the posture, I should say. That weight on the back of his neck lets me feel where he wants to go with his spine. Like, resist me a little bit. I can feel where he wants to go and I can keep my weight steering here. Okay, and that keeps me in this position monitoring his posture. What was the second rule? Open his elbow. If I, like, lean your weight to your left side so that this arm comes out, yeah. If he's able to bring this arm close to him, it's gonna be really hard for me to have a good front headlock. But if I can get this elbow opened out here like this, it's gonna be really hard for him to have a strong defense. Number three was, make sure he can't touch your hip reach like you're going for a single. Even if his, keep it, just keep it right there. Even if his posture is monitored and I've got his elbow open, if he can get his hand to the outside of my hip, he can start to drive me to my back and I'm left only with a guillotine now instead of having the choice to stay after him. He forced me to go to the end of the rope. And I just take that away from him and get to the other side of it. Now, once I'm here, what would be your next play, Jackson? Just follow those rules. Every defense that he offers you, follow those four rules. You see how there at the very end, when he rolled back and I rolled back to the top, that's when I punched it deeper. Because if I'd have had it too deep before, he would have kicked his elbow across, opening his elbow, touching my hip, and shutting the play off. So I waited until the moment was right, and finish it right there. All right, ready? One, two, three. Whatever movement your opponent makes, think about those four rules right there. All right, she's gonna be on her left hip here. She's got the quarter guard, and I've got the far knee post right there. So the same thing that we were doing before when we were going for the darts. Remember, on the darts, she was sitting up. We were basing and then opening her elbow, getting the posture from there, and then getting our hip away so we could get our arm off the hip. This time what we're gonna do is while we're in here in this position, she sits up. We're gonna wrap the head like we're looking for a guillotine right there. So don't worry too much about what are your hands doing. What I want you to focus on is using the, kind of your armpit and your lat to bend their head, say, this way. So back that direction. Do that with your body weight. If you, if you do that right, then your hands can kind of do whatever makes them the most sense to you. So I'm gonna make that movement with my body weight, and I'm gonna open the elbow at the same time with this pinch right here between my arm and my ribs. So when I go, continue your next play. I'm gonna be here. You see what I'm saying? And now I'm in good position here. Her elbow is open. If I wanted to, I could roll, like say she reached to my hip right here, I could roll back up and over my shoulder and into the mounted guillotine right there. If she turns and runs this way, then I'm gonna lock up an anaconda choke right here. I'm gonna walk it in and finish it. And if she tries to turn and run this way, then I'm gonna pop my head out of the hole, drop her into the space, and finish the Mars in here on this side. So these are the three base reactions that I want you to have tonight.
Number one, she sits up. We're all gonna run the same entry. Arm around and then drop my weight on her head. You guys see the, it's not this. And then try to roll over. I'm dropping my weight here, which allows me to pull with this elbow to open up that position. She's got her hand on my hip, so my first priority has gotta be to start shaking that hand out of there. So now I've taken care of I'll get the posture monitored. The elbow is open. See the elbow is higher than the shoulder. That means the elbow is open. Not is the elbow over here. The elbow's lower than the shoulder. Not open. Over here would be fine because the elbow's higher than the shoulder. I need the elbow higher than the shoulder. And then if she was still reaching for my hip, then I would want to shake my hip off of this. And now I can think about locking it. From here, I would go deeper and then try to lock it. Make your next reaction. Turn, you have to turn away, pop. And I'll walk it closed. Right there. Rather than trying to squeeze it. So that's the second reaction. If she keeps her hand on the outside, then you're gonna look back and roll right back where you came from. So over your shoulder, up, over, nice and easy on your partner like that. And then if she tries to turn to her knees this way, then I'm gonna pop my head out of the hole, and then this one will be right here for the marks on the other side. All right, so reaction number one, they keep their arm on your hip, roll back from whence you came. They turn to run, anaconda. They turn to run the other way, pop your head out of the hole and hit the marks, yes. On that anaconda, I know sometimes I'm bad about reach in to, to grab that you walked your hips and held that arm there that's is right that, that no that's a great that's a uh, great observation come out here and i'll show you the difference so get where you need to get to see this detail that he's asking about if you didn't hear what he said so just don't have it's okay. all right so one two and i clear him off of my hip and now he decides he wants to turn and go this way okay paul's right there what he said was, I noticed that when you went, you didn't punch through deeper and then try to grab here. What? Yes, that's right. Because he's gonna close his elbow right back down. He gets his elbow back in here and now I have to think about peeling him out again. There's no way that I can lock it right here. See that? So instead I keep the elbow open and I walk to here. Yeah, his hand can go wherever it is. Sometimes it'll be there. I just don't want it up here. I wanna kick it off and I wanna lock it kind of here in the middle of his tricep instead of up here where you can open your elbow. Yeah, I can't do that. But right here in the middle of his tricep, can you open that elbow now? <coughs> no way. And I got plenty of time now just to walk in and start to apply just a touch of squeeze. Feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great question. Great question. All right. So when I make my roll here, if he decides that he doesn't want to keep his arm on the outside or I'm able to shake it off, which is what I really wanted to do in the first place, then I'm not going to roll back to the guillotine anymore. I'm not saying you couldn't. You definitely could. But there's better plays available now. Okay? If he turns this way and gets onto his side, I go deep and watch my lock for the anaconda. Most of you are going to make this mistake. Scaff taught me this. I didn't know this until he showed me this. This is a game changer. Don't lock in the armpit right here. Uh, what is one of the what rules about the elbow here? He, we have to keep the elbow open. If the elbow starts to close, then he becomes strong again. Okay. So if I go and lock this in the armpit, watch as my hand goes to chase him, how he's able to close his arm. And now I feel like I don't have a long enough arm to make an anaconda. I'm like, oh, I guess that's just for guys with long arms. No, you just don't know what you're doing. Right? So don't lock here, lock here. Just bring it down right here to the middle of his tricep. And now watch, this arm, instead of going to the grip and opening my own elbow, making me weak, I open this to here and I stick my elbow on my hip and I use my hip to deliver my hand into the grip. And now the grip is right here, nice and low. Any surviving that one, Will? That's a hard nut. So I clear it off the hip. He tries to turn and he gets up to his side. Go ahead. I catch him right there. And then I deliver my hand to the hip 
or to the grip with my hip. So the lock is not up here in his armpit. It's down here on his tricep. I just continue to walk and wind it up. Squeezing mechanics are two, two things, and this is it. Elbows together, elbows down. Not this. You can't finish anybody good up here like this, right? Your elbows are open, you're like, for a marsh, for instance. Just uh, lift up, pop up on this elbow. Pop, no, pop, stop. Come on your side, right here. And get on your elbow. If I'm trying to reach here for this Zars, it's gonna be almost impossible for me to finish. I'm way up here where I can't squeeze strong. In this case, I'd have to chase him. Fine, there's my lock. Boop, boop. Finish. But if I wanted to finish him on a Mars, I wouldn't do it here. I would move my hip away, drop him into the pocket right there. Now my elbows are together and I would deliver the grip right up there. <laughs> I heard him gurgle there, that was a good one. Alright, so he goes. 